Hola a todos. Today we're going to look at informal commands and we'll also take a look at hotels. Before I do that, I'd like to introduce activity number five. Now this is for my class, so if your instructor has not um, is doing something else for activities, you can disregard this, just fast forward past it if you like. Okay, this is our last activity, virtual study abroad, El Metro. Este es un tren de Metro de Madrid, en España. In this activity, you learn how to use the Madrid subway, and you also plan a route on the subway from your apartment to Barajas Airport. So I think I mentioned that we, in previous iterations of this assignment, I'd had us pick out an apartment, location, all that. For this one, just I, actually, I provide a map, so we don't need to worry about um, uh, picking out a specific um, uh, subway station to leave from. Dice, you will soon leave Madrid, and you've decided to use the subway to travel from your apartment to the airport for your return flight, and you're researching how to use the subway, and you find this article. So first step, you're going to read this um, uh, reading. And then answer these questions in English. So set that up on a Word doc as you've previously done. Paso dos. You're planning your route on the subway to get to the airport. And you consult Metro de Madrid website to see what route to take. You're given the below map with the route beginning at Goya and ending at Aeropuerto T4. Okay, so you're going to begin at Goya, which is right here. Take the 2, take the 9, and these are the names of the stations. You got Principe de Vergara. And so I have these. It's a little hard to read this, obviously, but Principe de Vergara, Goya, Colombia, Aeropuerto, Take Cuatro. Okay, so you're going to use formal commands writing a paragraph describing the steps needed to arrive at the airport from Goya, uh, following the route on this map. You're going to label this as Paso Dos. You don't need to include this map, by the way, for your document. Just include the written paragraph, please. And I have a model here um, of another route, so you can take a look at that and use it as um, uh, a model for your writing. That is due on the 29th for us. Okay, ahora empezamos. Bueno, esta es la recepción. ¿Cómo se llama este señor? El recepcionista. Él y ella son, ¿cómo se llaman? Son las personas que se quedan en el hotel. Los huéspedes. Esta es la persona que limpia la habitación. ¿Cómo se llama? Se llama la camarera. Esta es la persona que lleva las maletas a la habitación. ¿Cómo se llama? El botones. ¿Qué son estos? Son las escaleras. Y si uno no quiere subir usando las, las escaleras, usa el ascensor. Ok, bien. Ahora estudiamos mandatos informales en la página 333 en el libro de texto. Dice, Rosa y Paula se quedaron en un hotel y Rosa está haciendo su maleta. Ve el video y después lee su conversación. o Observa las formas de los verbos en negritas y contesta las preguntas. Las preguntas son, How are affirmative commands formed? How are negative commands formed? Primero vamos a ver el video. Okay. Okay, looking at this dialogue, mandato informal, mandato informal, 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 informal. These are affirmative commands. How are they formed? 
The affirmative to command is the instead form of a present tense. Okay, so when using this context uh, with a person with whom you typically use to, it becomes a command. This is a negative to command. How's it formed? This is the usted command plus s. Okay, so we're going to form that in the exact same way as we would form uh, a formal command for ustedes, and then we'll add s to it. So let's take a look at that. Okay, mandatos informales afirmativos, la tercera persona singular del tiempo presente. Okay, so this is um, uh, the usted form of limpiar, usted form of comer, usted form of duerme. In this context, there are affirmative two commands. Now, there are some regular, irregular uh, two commands. These will have to be memorized. And let me go through how to form a negative two command. I'm going to come back to this one and this one. So uh, we'll include no, of course. And then we're just using the usted command. Then we're adding an S. No hables, no escribas, no vengas. So to form this, the infinitives of blar, yo tiempo presente, ¿cuál es la forma? Hablo. Then we're going to drop the O, we're going to add the opposite vowel, which is an E for AR verbs and um, uh, A for ERIR verbs, and then we'll add S to it. Now, the infinitive of this is venir. The yo form is vengo, is irregular. So we'll drop the O from that, put the opposite vowel, mas S, and then we have the negative two command. Now, in the case of, with these irregular two commands, um, with the exception of ir and ser, we can get the negative two command following the steps that we always do. For example, ¿Cuál es la forma yo, tiempo presente, de salir? Salgo. Se quita la O, se pone la A, más S, entonces no salgas. That would be the negative informal command. We can't get there doing that with ser, nor with ear. Okay, so for some reason the book didn't list these. Um, the negative two command is no vayas for ear. Negative two command is no seas for ser. Okay, dice, da El mandato informal para cada frase. So we're looking for the informal command here. Cada frase. This is activity one. So you are going to go to your worksheet. Complete that right there. A comprobar. And it looks like I have forgotten to put in activity one, but just so we're very clear on that. So you can pause here, complete that, and move on when you're ready. And when you are ready, we're going to go to the uh, Libro de Texto, página 337. Libro de Texto, página 337. Ejercicio 1027, la nueva empleada. Ingrid tiene... Un nuevo trabajo como camarera en el hotel y Gabino, otro camarero, le da consejos sobre lo que debe y no debe hacer. Escribe los mandatos informales necesarios para completar las recomendaciones de Gabino. Okay, so these are, these are affirmative two commands. These are negative two commands. So remember, for the affirmative two commands, we're simply looking for usted in the present tense. So this would be llega al trabajo a tiempo. So in this context, arrive to work on time. Now, remember, for the negative two commands, we're going to go through the same steps as we use to form formal commands, the instead command, that is to say, and um, then we're going to add S to that. Entonces, la forma yo, tiempo presente de abrir es abro. Se quita la O, se pone la A más S. No abras las maletas de los huéspedes. Don't open the suitcases of the guests. Buen consejo. Okay. You can pause here, complete this activity on your worksheet, and continue when you're ready. Y luego vamos a la página 338, actividad 10, 29, un conflicto moral. This is activity number three. It's complete on the worksheet. Cuando tomamos decisiones, a veces hay un conflicto en la conciencia. Trabaja con un compañero y túrnese para hacer el papel de la conciencia. Tenemos un modelo aquí. Hay un ángel, hay un diablo. El diablo dice, toma la cerveza. El ángel dice, no tomes la cerveza. Esa es la decisión. Bueno, ok, so you're going to 
answer for the devil, an answer for the angel in each question. So really there will be two answers for each one. And uh, we'll do one together. Well, actually, let me clarify these. Uh, some of them can be a little bit abstract. So what we're looking for in this one, number one, is put the paper in the trash, in la basura. Se llama la basura, se llama el papel. Okay, so put the paper in the trash. Now to put, ¿cómo se dice? Pues es el verbo poner, es irregular. El mandato informal, affirmativo de poner, so to put the paper in, would be pon. Pon el papel en la basura, dice el ángel. El diablo dice, this would be the negative two command, don't put the paper in the trash, no pongas el papel en la basura. Okay, so this one's pretty obvious, eat the cake, don't eat the cake. In this case, um, don't wash the dishes and go to the party, or wash the dishes and don't go to the party. This one's a little bit difficult. What they're looking for here is, um, it's not difficult, it's just a little abstract what they want you to do, but uh, leave a note, don't leave a note. And by the way, to leave a note would be de dejar una nota, okay, o no dejar una nota, okay? Que dice el ángel, que dice el diablo. Look at the exam and write the responses, las respuestas, or don't look at the exam and don't write the responses. And then lastly, wait for the botones and don't wait for the bellhop and don't close the door or don't wait for the bellhop and close the door. Okay, so that is what they're looking for. That's what I'll put down in the answer key. There are some other ways you could probably phrase those, but uh, that's what it'll look like. Okay, so you can pause at this point, complete that activity. Um, it doesn't look like I'm able to get it all in the screen at one time, but it's in our textbook on page 338. Bueno, tenemos una actividad más. Y vamos a discutir los hoteles. Okay, un momentito, yo tengo una pregunta. Okay, vamos a pensar en los hoteles. ¿Qué factores consideras antes de elegir un hotel para alojarte? Tal vez el precio. Tal vez la ubicación, location. Tal vez los servicios. Bueno, vamos a conocer el Hostal Aguilar Madrid. Y este es el hotel en que los estudiantes se quedan uh, en mi programa de study abroad. Está en el mero centro de Madrid. Vamos a ver. Espero que sí. ¿Ya? Yeah. Un momento. Ya vamos. Ok, por fin, estamos. Uh, está aquí. Esta es la Puerta del Sol. Este es el mero centro de Madrid. Ok, so be the center of Madrid, the center of Spain. And as you can see, it really is right in the middle of the center. Pretty much everything a tourist is going to be interested in is uh, right in this area here, easily walkable. Bueno. El hostal parece así. Uh, está en un edificio viejo, pero um, uh, las habitaciones parecen duelas. Parecen así, modernas. Los servicios, ¿qué tiene? Pues recepción, 24 horas. Guarda equipajes, ¿qué significa guarda equipajes? Baggage storage. Información turística. Fax, fotocopiadora, poco anticuada. Late checkout. Se puede hacer el checkout tarde, es decir. Servicio de desayuno solamente para grupos. Cuarto de baño. Caja fuerte individual. ¿Qué significa? Significa safe. Secador de pelo. Bajo petición significa you have to ask for it. Aire acondicionado, pero a veces no funciona. Durante el día, solamente por la noche. Teléfono directo. 
Ventanas insonorizadas significa soundproof windows, muy útiles porque hay mucho ruido en la calle. Calefacción. Heat. Servicio despertador. Televisor, muy importante. Lo más importante, tal vez, conexión Wi-Fi gratuita. Ok, entonces, hay, bueno, es un hostal, pero más o menos un hotel no está tan mal. Ahora, ok, for the last activity, ok, un momento. Okay, aquí está. Three questions, but before you do that, actually, um, the first two questions are regarding the hotel that we just looked at. ¿Cómo es el Hostal Aguilar? ¿Qué servicios ofrece este hotel que son importantes para ti? Then finally, you're going to read page 335. We've got a brief reading there on uh, Hoteles Unicos. And then um, uh, you're going to answer this one question. De todos los hoteles mencionados, es decir, en la lectura, in the reading, ¿Cuál te gusta más para visitarlo y por qué? Okay, so they talk about three different hotels there. And that is on page 335 in your textbook. 335. Okay, es todo para hoy. Gracias y adiós.